It started with a step followed by a trot. We learned to gallop. Then it got mechanical. At first it was to survive. It was all about the destination, but that changed when the journey started to get fun. I'm Julian Taylor, and these are my friends, Sam and Jen. If it has a motor, we will ride it, drive it, or fly it, and compete to win. It's not always about where you go, it's how you get there. It's Okay, Julian, so we flew into Raleigh. Correct. But we're not staying in Raleigh? Correct. So where are we going? Check what's on your hat. I know what's on my hat. I put it on this morning. It says Broward Motorsports. No, 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 no. Check the hat in your glove compartment, man. It says totally fly. Yes, I know the front does, but use your noggin. Check the back. Okay, that says Goldsboro. Exactly, that's where we're going. Goldsboro, North Carolina. I'm assuming you've got a plan? Oh, yes, I've always got a plan. So what are we going to be doing? What would you lock in? What are we going to be uh, having fun on? Well, that's the only thing we've got a little bit of a challenge of this morning. We've got to find ourselves a pair of machines. At the moment, I don't have anything. So you're telling me you bring me all this way, and you've got a plan, and the plan sounds broken. Well, I've got a plan. If we don't get the machines, it'll be broken. Oh, I can't wait to watch this go down. Hey, Goldsboro's renowned and famous for its barbecue. Let's pull over and have some lunch first and then go find the machines. No, no, no. We go out and play and do some racing, build up some hunger, and then go out and eat afterwards. So this is typical Julian. Doesn't have a strategy, no game plan. And luckily, I spot this dealership as we're driving down the highway. They don't even know we're coming and we're gonna ask them for about, uh, I don't know, $40,000 in vehicles. Oh, and can you drop it off for us while you're at it? It's gonna be both of our jobs to make this happen because this is not gonna be an easy task. Well, this looks like a place we could bag a pair of machines at. Question is, are we doing water or land? We're actually gonna do land. We're gonna go to Busco Beach, which is an ATV island. And around it and surrounding it is tons and tons of really soft sand, dunes, jumps, such and so forth. So I wouldn't recommend a motorcycle because we're going to get bogged down all the time. And Let's I do side by sides. Side by sides, exactly. Yeah. Let's pick out what we like and try to work some magic inside. <laughs> That's going to be the hard part. Bag a pair of machines from a dealership. I'll use uh, the Broward Motorsports connection. You use and I'll use my English charm. English charm and see what we can get. That's right. See, a lot those of choices. two things would be cool, don't you think? Oh, yeah. These things have a lot of power, a lot of suspension. The Razor and the Can-Am are the two fastest, most powerful machines in that category. They are both 1,000 cc's. They've got turbos. They compete against one another big time, so they've built these two machines to compete. All right, so now what we've got to do is go in there and persuade them to let us borrow them. We're going to have to put the charm on somehow. You do realize if two guys walked into my store and said, hey, can we borrow those two? Oh, and can you drop them off for me? I would kick them out of the store in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? Let's hope they're a little bit more hospitable than you are then. His British charm is going to get us nowhere. So my background in the industry, my connections, the people I know, and me owning dealerships maybe will influence this guy to loan us these two vehicles. What can we help you out with? Good morning, good morning, fine sir. How the devil are you? Good. Hope you're doing well. Very good indeed. I have a bit of a favor to ask you. What you got? We were looking at those two side-by-sides outside, the Maverick and uh, the Razor, mm -hmm. and we're here in Goldsboro to go and ride Bosco Beach, but we don't have any machines. Could we borrow yours? Okay. Really? Sure. Hey, we need to get the vehicles taken over there. Oh, yes, okay. One other favor as well, please. Um, do you have a trailer? Could you trailer them there for us? Because we don't have any way of transporting them. We've got two trucks, but they will never fit on the back. They're too big. Yeah, that's not a problem. Really? When do you need them out there? Now? We want to go ride this yeah. afternoon? Yes, sir. Well, we got to get them back also. One last thing. We need to get them home, too. Can you help us with that, please? Sure, that's not a problem. We'll meet you out there. Really? I can shot. I feel we didn't ask for enough. We should have got a T-shirt. We got something, right? <laughs> so at the end of the day, it did not come down to Sam owning a dealership. 
And it even didn't come down to me and my British charm. It came down to the Goldsboro people being wonderful and Performance East owners letting us have a pair of machines. How cool is that? I had no idea what to expect pulling in this place. It's right off the highway, and you're pulling through these gates not knowing it's gonna be 2,000 acres of riding, from sand trails to water to even a track. They've got a motocross track over there. This place is pretty cool. Well, here we are at Blusco Beach, and as you can see, it's a beach. This place is pretty wild. It is huge and unlimited riding. We are genuinely on an island, so let's have a race right the way around the island. Okay, but what are the stakes? The stakes have got to be that the loser buys the winner beer at a barbecue here in North Carolina. Well, after riding all day long here, I'm going to be thirsty, and I know I'm going to be hungry. Get your wallet ready. I'm going to get my goggles now, <laughs> and we're getting out of here. Get your wallet's what you're going to need. So Julian comes up with the idea of racing around the island. You know, whatever kind of race he wants to do is not a problem for me. We go through mud, water, land, it doesn't make a difference. Gonna beat them. This is what I do. Having these two machines together up against each other is excellent, because they're both 1,000 cc's, they're both turbocharged, but I've never done the Maverick. So I'm gonna be spitting some dust in Sam's face, guaranteed. So let's just say Julian does break something or gets stuck in the mud. Would I stop and help him? <laughs> That's the question. Uh, maybe after I cross the finish line, I'll go back and look for him. So Julian comes up with the idea of racing around this island, and I'm taking that race. He won't take this lightly if I beat him. So the Maverick is really quite a unique machine. Very, very meaty, loads of low-down torque, mid-range punch as well, extremely quick. It's got 1,000 cc's with a turbocharger on it, so that's the first thing it tells you. There's power, lots of it. And it's quite unique in the way that the suspension's very visible. Uh, you can play between four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive, and then when you go into a corner and it wants to slide on you, it grips. So the Polaris Razor 1000 is tried and true. It's been around for a long time. It's one of the top sellers when it comes to side-by-sides in the sport family. Tons of power, great handling, great suspension, and I know I got the thing off the ground a few times and it just landed so nice and smooth. One big difference that I had uh, over Julian is having the windshield, having the roof. It was for a much more comfortable ride. He didn't even have to wear goggles. I had to wear goggles because I couldn't see a damn thing. He had his sunglasses on, feeling really good out there, you know? But I was right on Sam's tail, and I wanted to get around the left-hand side of him, so I turned really hard, and all of a sudden I felt the machine come up. Up, up, it's not stopping. Yeah! And I'm fully upside down looking at the sand. Six-point harness is working perfectly. The blood's rushing to my head, and I see Sam come up on my right-hand side. Hey, Julian, are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine, but the blood's rushing to my head. See you in a little bit. Get me out! That's right, I told you I would win. He's sitting over there upside down. Now I gotta go save him. I knew this was gonna happen. You don't give a brand new side-by-side -side to some British guy that walks in your showroom. <laughs> you are one crazy individual. And literally, I was quite tight, and I just felt it go, and I thought it was going to come back. I turned the wheel, I thought it was going to Nope, it kept uh, going all the way. <laughs> and I saw it happen, but I had to finish the race and win, because I know you always do tricks. You I thought that was one race? of your tricks, so who knows what you do. You always do something. I said for sure, I'm going to go win, I'm going to come back, and come help you. So that's why I was sitting upside down for half an hour, it felt well, like. It was more like The 15, blood rushed into my head, I'm like... 15, 20 in. minutes. I win the race. It was a good battle. We were going back and forth, but my skill level set us apart, and I won the race. Well, there's no mistake in this one. Yes, he won it. I flipped the damn machine, so there's no way I can claim a win here. I witnessed him roll it over, but I came across the finish line. I won. I went back. I saved him. So I'm a double champion today, I feel. I think this place is fantastic. Well, your wallet's going to be pretty empty. Between paying for this and buying me drinks and dinner tonight, you're going to be on zero. So now we're headed to downtown Goldsboro, to get a beer and something to eat. I want some barbecue. Hello. Hey. You must be Ashlyn. Yeah, Sam. How are you? Yeah. Hello, Ashlyn. How are you doing, Julian? Nice, nice to, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. 
So welcome to Goldsboro. Thank you for having us. Yeah. This place is pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. This is a cracking building, isn't it? It is. This is Goldsboro Brew Works. It used to be this old bicycle shop built in the early 1900s. It was about 80 years old, and then they turned it into this uh, craft beer room. That's cool. This place is really, really neat. So we're in downtown Goldsboro. Um, Goldsboro was founded in 1847. It's one of the oldest incorporated cities in North Carolina, one of the highest densely populated cities in North Carolina with historic buildings. We're the home of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. So when you go around Goldsboro, you're going to see a lot of that heritage to our planes. So there's static displays of sabers, very rich history, but one of the other big pieces to Goldsboro, Wayne County, is that we're home to Mount Olive Pickles. So Sam and Jillian don't know it yet, but they're getting a real taste of our pickle heritage, too. We're going to give you the Goldsboro specialty drink. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. One, two, two three. three. That's bloody pickles! <laughs> That's not a drink, that's pickles. Well, yes, it's pickle juice. Woo. Sam and I got duped through and through. She puts this little, what well, it was a shot. I'm thinking, beer, shot, that doesn't make any sense. Deck it, it's gross. It's the only way I can describe it. I'm not having another one of these. I need a real drink. Absolutely, let's go get a real drink. And it's drink. on you this time. And I can do that. But wait, just don't get too crazy tonight, because at 9.30 tomorrow morning, you have to meet me at the fire station downtown. So the guys have another competition in the morning at the Goldsboro Fire Department. And I hear Julian's a big fan of the food scene here, and we have plenty of barbecue for him. So tomorrow, he's going to get a real taste of our culture. Good, how are you? Good. Yeah, so as you met, this is Chief Cobb. Welcome Good back to, to downtown. This is the fire station one for the Goldsboro Fire Department. Goldsboro Fire Department has five stations with six companies, 84 line personnel respond to calls for fire and EMS calls inside the city of Goldsboro. Well, I'm going to leave you in good hands here. Just promise me you won't make me regret introducing Don't you. Don't look at me, look at hey, him. Hey, hey, I'm just Behave. looking forward to when the siren goes off, we've got to go to work. Every bloke's always had a childhood dream of driving a fire engine. I think it's even another bucket list thing that I've got to get done. And today is actually the first chance I've ever had to actually go and do it. I got to tell you, I've seen these everywhere I go. Pretty neat. But that over there, what's up with that? That's our 1919. If you want to, step over here. Yeah, we'll take a look at cool. it. Oh, look at this. It's beautiful. It's definitely wild. Yeah, so this is the 1919. So I was extremely impressed with the 1919 fire engine. Well, just because of the history for one, but also the setup. It was funny, because when we got into it, the steering wheel was right in front of you. So you couldn't eat too many pork pies and fit into that into that truck. Here's Chief Dixon. Chief, Chief, uh, what's going on? Hey, how are you, Sam? How are you? I'm Sam. Sam. Hey, Chief Dixon, uh, Julian Sam, Taylor. Nice to meet you. I know you guys. Welcome to Goldsboro. So you know all about this truck, then? It's actually the second. Um, they got one in 1913, but this is the oldest surviving piece in Wayne County. The first one, it was scrapped and used for the war effort. So All right. this is it right here. Can't imagine the suspension on this. Is it, anything that, like your air suspensions on the big ones? More importantly, does it run? It does run. It right We're gonna now, drive it. We, oh, yeah, we got it. We got it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I know about this guy. No driving for him, no. The good news is Chief Dixon did his research before we came. He's a smart man, obviously. He did his homework. And he knew coming into this today that Julian would not drive that vehicle. Well, at, at least for his orders, Julian would not drive that vehicle. I tell you what, we got a little test for you guys coming up. If you can pass that test, that engine that's about 100 years newer will let you guys take that one out. How about that? What are we going to be doing? What are you going to show us? Uh, one will be the turnout gear challenge. You'll put on our gear to see what it's like to dress out and have to get on the truck within a minute. If you can do that, and then we'll go on to the next one. If not, it's back to training. So I was quite surprised to find out about the turnout challenge. I didn't realize we were actually going to be doing stuff. I thought we were just going to be driving fire engines. OK, Chief, you got these guys, yes, right? Yes, sir. All right, pleasure meeting you, gentlemen. You too. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for the history lesson. Appreciate all right, it. All right, all right. <laughs> getting told off already. Today, Julian and Sam are going to be participating in a turnout gear challenge and a hose rolling challenge. Our turnout gear challenge is something that our firefighters have to do on every call. This is what you're going to be doing. This is going to be your turnout challenge. All right, we have one minute to respond to calls. Firefighter Parker is going to demonstrate how do we put the gear on. You know, she puts her hood on first, steps right into her boots. Her pants are already pushed down, ready to go up. Suspenders are up, buckles the pants, coat goes on. Simple zipper across the front to make sure it doesn't open up on us in a fire or anything like that. Here she pads her helmet, puts her helmet on, 
and she also has her gloves. Now you're ready to go. You should be on the way to the truck now. If not, you'll be getting left. So Chief Cobb went over the turnout challenge. Didn't sound very hard. Under a minute, no big deal. We watched Tiffany do it. She made it look like a piece of cake. You got a minute from when the tone goes off <sighs> to be on the truck ready to go. So the first one to the <sighs> back of the truck is the winner. Wait, hold on, hold on. Stretch, make sure you're good to go and see if you can do it as fast as Tiffany can. Because you know, to be sitting here talking, all of a sudden, Tone, go, let's go. Come on, guys, you got a minute. We got to get on the truck. It is definitely much harder than it seems, and I can only imagine when that bell's ringing and you're rushed and you know that you're going to save somebody's lives and you're trying to get buckled up fast, it probably feels like three hours. It was actually a lot harder than you think. The reason it was a lot harder is because of the temperature. As soon as you get in there, you start sweating. And literally putting the jacket on, your arms are sticking because you can't get your, your hands into the sleeves of the jacket. They thought they were just getting dressed, but putting the turnout gear on was a little bit more challenging than I think both of them anticipated. They thought they had plenty of time within a minute, but a minute goes by pretty fast when you're trying to put the gear on. We might make it. Then again, you may not. I may send you guys back to training. <laughs> hey, good job, guys. It looked like you both were able to make it under a minute. I think you made the cut, so good job, man. I think we'll be moving up to the next thing. What do we do next? We'll let you work in the gear a little bit. You're uh, going to roll some hose uh, up. You know what I think it's... I'm going to do? I'm going to call the fire department to come and cool me down inside this time. I've already lost five pounds in this thing. <laughs> it's so hot. I got to tell you, when all that gear is on, they kept on talking about how heavy it was. I can deal with the weight. It's the heat. It is hot. And when you have that full outfit on and the sleeve over your head, it goes up about 40 degrees, I'd imagine. All right, guys, now the last part is the hose roll. Whoever rolls the hose first wins. Whenever you're ready to go, I'll say go and start rolling. Ready, go. The hose rolling competition, how simple is that? You roll a hose at home every day. No big deal, you just roll a hose. Well, it's competition when it comes to me and Julian. So of course, the thing was like 3,000 feet long. So the hose rolling was really interesting. I started on my knees and I realized it wasn't quite as quick as I wanted it to be, so I stood up and then I got really big rolls. But then what happens? Sam sticks his butt in my head. Literally uses his right cheek to get me pushed over. I wasn't standing for that. It's like football. He, he left the, the gate open, so I nutmegged him straight between his legs, rolling, 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 rolling under his legs, and then he decided to try and sit down on my head, but too late. Shoulder up, off he went. Piece of cake to win that one. You're almost five feet and you'll be done. He's finished. Jump, jump. <laughs> He's finished. <laughs> Once again, both of them stated, hey, we're just rolling hose. I think it was a little bit more challenging than they thought it was. Not too bad, guys, but I think you probably will need to spend some more time in the academy. Since Julian won, you did win the opportunity to drive. That's not what Chief Dixon said. That's not what he said. So if we're going to do it, we need to go ahead and do it before he comes back. Absolutely. My whole point is you don't want Absolutely. to go against what Chief Dixon don't said. Don't listen to him he one said he bit. Shouldn't drive. Don't listen to him at all. That's not right. It's totally out of order. Taking risks is what we do every day. That's right. That's so let's go ahead and head to the truck so we can get this <laughs> thing to Let's do it. All right, Julian. Oh, oh. To this drive thing this thing, cool. simple. Switch here. Right. Ignition. All right. Stop. Start up. There we're we ready go. to go. Chief Dixon's on the way back, so we got to do it before then. All right. So, Can't let him see us. Yeah. So hop on in. All right. And uh, and then we'll go. But you remember, you promised me, one time around the block is all we're doing. We're gonna go for barbecue. No, one time <laughs> around the block. You can't do barbecue. We're one gonna time go around the block. Barbecue. So Chief Cobb was nice enough to let us go around the block, but you put Julian and I behind the wheel of that big thing, and you think we're just gonna go around the block? There's no way that's gonna happen. I'm not gonna fight fires, but I am finally gonna get my barbecue, but under the sound of a siren and a horn. Everybody's gonna get out of my way to let me get to the barbecue. So we pull up on the fire truck to a place that, you know, it didn't really stand out to me. I wasn't sure what it was all about. It's all Wilbur's written on the outside. And the minute that fire truck door opened, that smell, I just smelt the barbecue and I had to have it. Hey, Ashlyn, how you doing? Good. Hello. Good to see you all again. I know where we are now. We're in a barbecue joint, I can tell. And it smells gorgeous. It smells really good. Sam, why don't you have a seat? Julian, right. come with me. I've got an extra special surprise for you. We're going to go get some barbecue. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to take him behind the scenes to show him how the pig is actually cooked. So he's in for a real treat. So where am I? I can smell something really good. I, I know. You've, you've been asking for the surprise. So are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> 
with you, dead pig! And I could tell I was in something that related to barbecue because it had a beautiful smell. So Ashlyn takes Julian to the back, and they were gone for a long time. I said, I have to see what's going on. So I sneak over to the door, happen to have a little window, and I'm looking in there, seeing what's going on, and I see Julian all up in this guy's business, working on the food. He's got this big block with two really big knives, and he starts playing the drums and cutting it all up. So the food finally comes out. It is amazing. I can just smell it coming out the door, and they brought the whole spread. It had a little bit of everything. The trip to Goldsboro was definitely interesting. Ashland has been great. She showed us around, learned a lot. And it's, it's a small little town that has so much to offer, which is what's neat about it. It's easy to go to big towns like maybe Chicago or New York or Miami or whatever the case might be. But when you find a town like this, it's a jewel that you don't even know is there. And to be able to go to Busco Beach the way we did and, and have so much fun over there, the fire station, the brewery, there's so many neat little places here. And honestly, I wish we had more time to visit more places because I know there's so much more here to find. I have to say, I've had a fantastic time. Everybody's been extremely friendly, uh, it's extremely accommodating. The food's been fantastic. It's a really pretty little place. All right, enough talking. I can't wait any longer to eat, so let's go ahead and dive in. OK, but hold on. Before we even go there, Again. you got to remember, it's not always about the destination. It's, it's how, how you get, get there. there.